Hello, it's absolutely wonderful to be with you all. We're going to be starting with um, the first session, which Rob and I get, Bob and I are going to do, uh, which is um, looking at taking good photographs using smartphones for use on social media, promoting um, climate activism and um, Extinction Rebellion events. So um, my background is I'm a filmmaker. I make documentary television films. Um, I live in London. And for the last half dozen years, six years, I've been mainly training people to make films using their smartphones. Um, so that's, um, I've been working for um, the BBC in Africa and um, UNICEF and Thompson Foundation in Africa and Asia. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really passionate about what you can actually achieve with a smartphone, particularly when you're making stuff for social media. And um, over to my co-presenter. My background is very similar to Kate's. And I share the passion, which is all the broadcast training we've had and working with you know, relatively expensive equipment, all that can now be applied to a phone that you've got in your hand. And we both try and enable as many people as we can to have a go, basically. And today is about how to try and make it a little bit better. That's all, a little bit better. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to be running through um, the basics of photography using your phone, first of all. Um, this will take us about 45 minutes, and then we're going to leave 15 minutes for questions and for us to interact with each other at the end of the session. Um, if you think of questions as you go along, pop them in the chat, but we may not have much time to look at them as we go along. We may have to address them all at the end. So the basic craft is the same, whether you, you are using um, a smartphone or you are using a very expensive camera. The basic principles of photography apply. And um, Bob's going to be start talking by what it is that we are trying to photograph when we are um, filming activism. So what we're looking at basically is your camera that you've got in your hands can be made much more effective when you're using it to, to, to cover an action by taking a, a picture which is as good as you possibly can. So what is the purpose? We are trying to take photographs, and later we'll be talking about filming, to cover an action to help those photographs that we can put up or those films to put up to spread the word and build up campaigns via social media. That's the basis of what we're doing. And everything we're going to do subsequently, which we'll be talking about how we can take better photographs and make better films will be based on that. So thinking about photography and thinking carefully about what it is that you're photographing. We, good photos will tell a story that the viewer will understand with little additional text. And if you look at those photographs on screen, that means, that doesn't mean that there's no text on screen. There's plenty of text on screen because the text that's on screen is from the event. So you've got some logos there which identify it. You can see that there's some different shot sizes. So what we're looking to do is capture as many images that encapsulate the event. So the photograph with the banner uh, is very simple. It's just showing people in a, what we call a wide shot uh, in action. They're, they're walking down the streets, the photographer is in front of the action so we can see faces, we can see the banners. The picture to the left is a much more 
much closer shot. You can see faces, but there's still the mask with truth on and a logo behind it. So we're trying to convey the story in good pictures. I mean, my favorite is the one bottom left where you can see these not words, what we call a close up, eyes looking at the camera, logos, very good. And the one on the right is showing a young woman who's chained herself to a boat in this case. Uh, and so it, it's, it's quite dynamic and there's emotion conveyed by those photographs. The first thing we need to think about is the framing. What are we going to actually put in the photograph? You know, say you've got um, an, a demonstration or an action, some sort of theatrical action happening in front of your eyes. Maybe you've been involved in planning it. What part of it is it that you are going to choose to put in the frame that will, um, that will make a picture that will tell your story? So, for instance, um, looking at this photograph, which has, a, it's what we call a mid shot, but it tells the story very clearly. There's a sort of standoff between a police officer and a peaceful protester. It's medium shot, but what's fabulous about it is it fills the frame. When we're filming, for, filming photographs for social media, we want to fill the frame. We don't want to have a whole border around the edge because social media is, um, people are looking at things quite close up on their phone and they like to see big impactful images. Close ups, really getting in there close works very well on social media. Um, there's a trick that you can Kate, all... Can I, Kate, can yeah. I just say something to the uh, people listening? If you want to see Kate full screen, which is very useful, click the top right uh, button which says view and choose speaker view and then you will get Kate and you'll be able to see everything really clearly. Thank you. So the first tip for helping you with framing is to go into your phone setting and apply what is called the grid, a three by three grid. And this will give you, um, I've got some examples here. And um, whether your phone is a, an old Android or top of the range iPhone or a brand new Samsung, they all have in the photograph, photography or camera settings, the ability to put on a grid. And the grid will help you with framing your photographs, deciding where the subject of your photograph is. And it, it looks something like this on your camera. And from, by switching the grid on, every time you take a photograph, you can use the grid. Now, it's called a three by three grid because most of us have two eyes, when we look at something, there are points on the photograph that we concentrate on. And they are at the intersections of a three by three grid. So when we are placing subjects on our grid, it's a really good idea to put um, eyes, um, when we're filming, uh, taking photographs of people to have them not bang in the center, but to actually just slightly off to one side with their eyes lined up with the grid. I'll show you some other examples of how the grid can be useful with framing. So this is a, a rather dull wedding photo, but you see again, he's not in the middle of shot. Again, sort of an abstract picture, but by the leaf not being bang in the middle of the shot, it's a much more interesting shot and your eyes are drawn to this leaf immediately. The same thing applies when we are shooting the horizon. 
rather than having it bang across the middle of the screen, it's better to have it either at the lower third or the upper third. Uh, which one I'm going? Well, you can see that's what's happened there as well. This shot absolutely all over the rule of thirds. Now, photographers will tell you this rule is made to be broken and there are photographs that are fantastic that don't abide by it. But as a rule of thumb, when you are thinking, what should I put where in my photograph? If you've got the grid automatically on your camera screen, you will find that you make more interesting photographs. Go back to the last one, Kate, just for a sec. This I one. love that. Oh, you've got something. The sun is slap bang in the middle of one of those intersections. Yeah. And, and the horizon, the, the event horizon, as call it, the, the sky is right across that top third. And you don't necessarily know why you like it, but you like it. Yeah, it's much easier for your eye to follow the picture and move around the picture in the order that you, the photographer, would want them to do that. So if you learn nothing else today, get that grid on your camera and start using it when you take photographs. You know, even if you're taking photographs of your, your grandma or a beautiful sunset, use the grid. It's it will really improve your photographs very quickly. Filling the frame is really important. Don't think about leaving a border around the edge. Fill the whole frame. And when you're using a smartphone, another important thing is to use the lens of your camera without using the digital lens. Um, the digital lens will give you um, not as good a result. So if you want to zoom in to something, thinking, um, uh, say, if I was uh, wanting to film this screen now, I would be better off moving in with my camera, ra uh, with my phone, rather than using the digital zoom, because the digital zoom will start to degrade the quality immediately. And you can always edit the photographs afterwards and zoom in, and that will be using the, uh, the same digital zoom, um, maybe even a better quality one on um, some sort of editing application. Um, when we are filming people, it's quite tricky in the time of COVID, but when we are zooming in, we zoom with our feet when we're filming with smartphones. If you're lucky enough to have a fancy phone like this one that's got more than one lens, then by all means, zoom in or zoom out by you switching lens, but don't use the digital zoom on it, move in get closer or move further back, get further away. You'll get much sharper pictures. The other thing when we're taking photographs for social media is to think which way up are we going to use our phone? Um, most of us look at our phone this way up, don't we? When I'm going to look at a photograph that's been taken in what we call landscape. So this photograph has been taken in landscape. Like it's the same shape as your TV screen or as your laptop screen. And that's, a, that's called landscape orientation. And is what you would use if you were um, making a film, for instance, that was going to be watched on TV or on laptop screens. If you were making, um, but if you're taking photographs for Facebook, for instance, you can do them either way around because most people these days look at Facebook on their phone and therefore they will prefer what we call a portrait, the phone this way up. 
Um, but they're not averse to turning their phone over, particularly to watch a film. Um, the same thing with Twitter. Um, Instagram will be, um, Instagram tends to make the uh, photograph square. Um, therefore, it's a bit irrelevant which way up you do it. Um, and will you be able to um, use either orientation? So this, but the, the, the crucial thing is if you're making um, photographs for a social media story, try and get them all the same orientation because it's much easier then for the person who's viewing it to look at it like this or like this rather than have to keep going like that with that to turn their phones over. So decide in advance, am I going to be going for this kind of picture or am I going to be going for the landscape style of picture? Think about it, that's the crucial thing. Which way is going to be best? I mean, if you're filming the person giving a speech, it's called portrait because this is the easiest way to look at a person because we are long and thin. Um, and if you're going to be doing a lot of portraits for this particular for a particular social media story, you might well therefore want to continue with them in that orientation. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Bob to talk about um, light and exposure. So looking at focus, you've got to decide what you want to be clear and sharp and what you want to be much more um, out of focus in the background. So looking at the pictures we've got on the screen there, you've got to decide what you want to have in focus. So top left, we've got a very dramatic close shot. And the person in the foreground is in focus and the bark is in the background is out of focus. But it's not sufficiently out of focus that you can't still recognise what it says. So you're directing the viewer to the parts of the photo that you want them to focus on. This may be the middle of the frame. So the, 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 the subject is right in the middle. Um, and you can achieve this by, with your smartphone, touching the screen and it, that is the part of the screen that you want to be in focus. So if you look at the picture in the middle, that's a wide angle shot, but it was a very bright day. So all of it's in focus. Uh, Bob, yeah? Bob, sorry, yeah. could I ask you to turn your microphone up a little? It's a little quiet. Thank you. Yeah. Or maybe just speak louder. Sorry. I can try that. Oh, brilliant. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so, if you look at the picture on the bottom right, the people in the picture are clear and sharp. But the background's out of focus. And that produces an effect that we find comfortable. An out of focus background means that you emphasize the focus on the, the people in the foreground. So with a, a smartphone, if you've got a portrait mode, that adds this kind of effect so that it makes the subject, the, the person in the, the middle of the screen, in focus, and it m makes the background more out of focus. So again, as Kate was saying, there are things like your grid, that if you look up what you can do with your phone, then there's a, things in there that can really help you emphasize what you're trying to do. So if we move on to exposure, these are the two key factors. One is whether the camera is in focus or not, and the other one is how well exposed it is. And looking at exposure, 
the lady top left is nicely exposed and the background's exposed. So you can see her and you can see where she is. The same with the, the picture in the middle. And what you need to do if you're outdoors is try and keep the sun on your back. If the sun's on the back, your back, then it's on the faces of the people in the photograph. So the picture in the center, they're being lit by the sun and it's nice and even. And the reason I like this photograph is the woman on the right is actually looking at us. She's engaging with us. She's looking at the camera. But if we look at the picture on the bottom left, there the subject has been put in a window. The person who wanted to do the filming thought that would be nice. The problem is all the light is coming from behind him. And so the window is very bright and overexposed. His face is okay, but the overall effect of the picture is not very pleasing. I find it uncomfortable to look at. So the way around that in that particular situation is, if you're doing some expensive film and you put loads of lights on and you put lights on this side, but if you're not, what you can do is put him in the window, but to one side of it and move your camera to the other side so that it's lit by the light of the window. You can see in my picture, there's a window out there and I've got light on this side of my face. I've actually got a bit of light coming from this side as well because I cheated, but <laughs> that's a different story. And the, you can have both the best of both worlds. You can have the person in the window but lit by the window. In this case, if the window is directly behind their heads, have you got a picture to show that, okay? No? Oh, no, I thought you had a picture on your phone that you could show that. No? No. Nope. That's fine. <laughs> um, so. Should I just, um, to summarize, you, your, your phone, is designed for uh, very lazy Americans, basically, who want to be able to just point it and take a photograph that will be have the exposure, the light, and the focus taken from the middle of the screen. All phones are, when you open the camera, and we can see here, what can we see here? My ceiling. Um, If we, it will automatically focus on what is in the middle of the screen. Um, and it will also take the live reading from that. So to make it do something different, you need to touch on the part of the screen that you want it to focus on. So in this case, that beautiful stained glass window over here is focused on and then Next to the box where the focus appears on an iPhone, you get a slider that allows you to change the exposure by sliding it down or by sliding it up. You need to uh, close your fingers, Kate, so that only your finger, yeah, that's it. You can yeah. see what you're doing there. There we go. Yeah. So you can slide it up and down and it changes the exposure. Some Android phones have that feature, but some of them unfortunately don't. There is an app called Open Camera that I'll put details of in the chat, um, which is a free app, free um, from Google Play Store for Android phones. And that will separate your exposure from your focus because you don't always want to have the light reading at the same point as the thing that you want to be in sharp focus. Um, so open camera, I'll put some details in the chat of how you use open camera. Um, and there are some very good YouTube tutorials on how to use open camera, which will show you how to free up your camera from lazy American settings, basically. Photograph in an event. I have to um, 
say about these pictures that they were all photographed in Europe and they're based on the way that European police react in this kind of situation. You, when you're filming your own event, you know your local police and you know that in some case they overreact and they can be quite heavy handed. So this is filming a European event. But in terms of the coverage, knowing what to expect is really important so that you're prepared. You need to know where the action is going to be. And if the action has, uh, it moves on, you need to know how it will move on. So in this case, you, we've got an establishing shot, which is somebody obviously in the road because there's a car going past in the background and you've got his banner, which is telling you what it's about. There's also the second picture down. There's, there's some interest from the public. They're interacting with the person. Friendly. You know, showing some interest and some sympathy, empathy. So the big picture in the middle, you've come back wider to show there's plenty of activity. Yes, the road's being blocked. Um, but in the bottom, there's a conversation. And this is a conversation between the activist and the police in this kind of situation. And they are explaining to him that he's blocking the road. Now, talking about knowing what's going to happen, things are dynamic, they move on. And in this case, the things that have moved on is the bottom right where there's a removal. The, the person, the activist has been taken away by the police. So just to recap on that, when you're planning how to film a, an action, the more information you've got, the better. And if you look at these series of pictures, they're all taken from different angles. Kate took about the knees. If you can't zoom because your camera doesn't have another lens, you can zoom with your feet and you can walk closer. In an action, you've got to be fluid. You've got to keep moving. If you take up a position, which shows you a good shot at the start and you plant your feet down on the ground and you say, that's it, I'm here for the duration. You won't get interesting coverage. You've got to be moving around. You've got to be looking at it from different angles. You've got to be keep your eyes open for interactions between members of the public that you can't predict. You've got to look for an emotional involvement Let's look for humour sometimes. Something funny happens because, then you know, maybe something funny happens with the police. You know, somebody says something to them and they find it funny. You know, they're, they're not always, you know, they're always on duty, but they're not always um, stern-faced. I think that's about it, Kate. Do you want to chip in anything on covering the action? No, I think the is to be a, as aware oh, as possible of what's going to happen. We're coming, sorry, in, in terms of time, we're coming up to 45 minutes, so we need to leave time for Q&A. But you want to go back and recap on anything, Kate? Um, just, I think, really to say it's a really good idea if you are um, involved at all in the planning of an action to think carefully about how you'll get photographs. Um, I was recently involved in an action we did in um, London, which we did on the River Thames, where we, um, some activists from Extinction Rebellion, boarded um, a rig that was doing some building on the Thames, and it was in the middle of the river. And when we actually, we carefully planned how the boat was going to get them to the rig and how they were going to get on the rig and how we were going to get the publicity. But what we hadn't really appreciated was how far away the rig 
actually was. We should have had somebody on the rig with a camera or with a, a smartphone capable of taking decent pictures. We just didn't plan ahead properly. We didn't think how were we going to get the pictures. Um, so all the pictures were quite distant um, that we were taking from the banks of the river. So think ahead, what's going to happen in the action? How are you going to get right up close to it to get those big close up shots that look so good on social media? Um, think about where the light is. Make sure you're the right side of everything, that you've not got the sun shining into your eyes uh, uh, so that everybody is backlit and you can't properly see their faces. Um, think about what's going to be the great shot and how are you going to make sure you're in the ideal position to catch it with your smartphone. And I Thinking think that's about... probably everything. Yeah, go on. No, just think about interviewing. Kate's right. You know, you've got to have the light in the right place, but you've also got to think about the subject. And if you're filming an interview and the sun is directly behind you, and more importantly, right into their eyes, so look at them before you start filming. And if they've got their eyes closed into little narrow slits and they look very uncomfortable, it's because they've got too much sunlight. And all you have to do, it's really simple. You don't have to move massively. If you move a little bit to one side or the other, you've still got nice light on their face, but it's not directly into their eyes. And obviously that depends on the time of day and how high the sun is. But, you know, don't be so anxious about doing your interview that you don't think about the comfort of the person that you're asking to uh, answer your questions. So I think that's it. Uh, 